Hey everybody, Mike here. I've got some great news. The Starlink launch earlier this week was the final launch required for the Starlink public beta. I've got all the details on the US and Canada coming up. People have been calling this Scrubtober because of all the scrub launch attempts, including two previous attempts at the Starlink launch, the SpaceX launch of the GPS-3 satellites, and multiple scrubs of the United Launch Alliance with their Delta IV Heavy trying to launch an NRO mission. Thankfully though, the streak is over. Let's take a look at this early morning Starlink launch. Two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Equal pitching damage. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Max Q. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Terminal guidance. Stage one, landing leg deploy. MVEC burn two, and good shutdown. Shrouding deployed, confirmed. Just after the satellites were deployed, Elon Musk tweeted that once these satellites reach their target orbit, they'll be able to start rolling out a fairly wide public beta in the northern US and hopefully southern Canada. Now, in previous launches, it typically takes around four months for the satellites to reach their target orbit. This one is notable though, where they added a second, second stage burn so that they would inject the satellites into a circular orbit. And they've said that this will help them reach their target orbit much faster. We will be performing two second stage burns today to deploy those 60 Starlink satellites about one hour into the mission. Those two burns allow us to deploy the satellites into a circular orbit, which helps them get to their final orbit about 550 kilometers above the Earth much faster. So everybody's watching pretty closely to see how quickly these satellites can get into their target orbit. It's probably looking like closer to maybe November or December though, before they actually get there and they can start this public beta. While we wait for these satellites to reach their target orbit, there have been two examples of early users trying out the system. The first, in Walden, Washington, SpaceX has given their emergency management department seven Starlink dishes, to help respond and manage the areas devastated by wildfires. The people there described it as the easiest and most reliable communication system they've ever had to set up. You can see some examples where it looks like it's been fairly easy for them to just drop one of these user terminals down and quickly get access to the high speed, low latency internet connection they need. The second example is the Ho Tribe. SpaceX has given them a user terminal to connect their very remote location to the internet. 
Ho Tribe is uh, 23 miles south of Forks, Washington. We're very remote. The last eight years, I feel like we have been paddling up river with the spoon. And it seemed like out of nowhere, SpaceX just came up and just catapulted us into the 21st century. On the Canadian side, things are a little bit more uncertain. SpaceX did apply for and was granted a BITS license in Canada, Basic International Telecommunications Service. But what they really need is the Spectrum Allocation License, and that is still pending. Our application process isn't as open as the FCC process, so we don't know what stage that application is in. This even came up in the Canadian Parliament, and I've got a video here. And it's still not working. Mr. Speaker, the rural broadband expansion has been an unmitigated da disaster. We've heard plenty of big plans from the Liberals over the last five years, but very little delivery and many unsatisfied internet users. However, a new entrant, SpaceX, may be able to offer a solution for rural, Canada, rural Canadians and their businesses have been desperately needing. They aren't asking for a cent. They just want their license approved. When will the minister get busy and give it the green light? Yeah. Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate my colleague's passion on this file. And if he'd like a briefing on how we've been moving forward and how we can work together, I am happy to offer it to him. I'll stop it here. Not really much of a response. We've even got a petition on the go in Canada to get SpaceX authorized. So if you haven't signed it already, the link is in the description down below. Definitely check it out and sign it and let's see if we can get SpaceX authorized for the spectrum they need. It's been a busy few weeks for me with my day job, so I haven't been responding to comments as much as I normally do. But let me know down below if you're pushing your government to get SpaceX authorized to operate in your country. And for those of you in the northern US, you're the lucky ones. Let me know how you're getting ready for possible participation in the Starlink beta. If you're getting value from these updates, hit the like button and subscribe down below. Use the bell icon to get notified of my new videos as soon as they're posted. For those of you in the northern United States, I've got some videos coming up talking about everything we know about the installation so far, what you might need, things to consider, how much space you need in the sky to see that northern view of the satellites. So definitely keep an eye out for those videos coming up. It's exciting times. I love good news updates. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.